everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. It is time for another new project and it's going to be another Edwardian project, but it has basically no relation to last week's Edwardian project other than the fact that I'm also going to be wearing this in ragtime. So it is a similar era. I'm going for just a little bit later with this one by like a year or two, but that's kind of meh. And uh, that's basically the only similarity. So this one is going to be a jacket. Now, I have been going back and forth on what kind of jacket that I want to make because originally I was thinking, oh, I'm going to make two jackets that I will wear in ragtime, both out of the same fabric, and they'll both go with the same skirt, but they'll be one for one scene and one for another scene. And then I was like, um, hi. That's a lot of work. Why, why would I do that for two scenes? Particularly when I don't know really how much use I will get out of this style of jacket or frankly any jacket that's kind of like a darker Edwardian jacket. I don't know how much use I will get out of that for just, you know, going and having picnics and teas and stuff because it's a much more somber look. And so why would I make two of them? doesn't make sense. I was originally going to make a cropped jacket for one scene, kind of like an Eaton jacket, and then a longer jacket for another scene. And <laughs> here is where I now have reached my difficulty because now I have been having a hard time deciding which one do I want? Do I want cropped or do I want long? So yesterday I went on Instagram and posted that question to you all, which one should I make? And you all said a few more people said long than said short, like by about, I think, five or six so far. So there is that. And then I decided to ignore you. <laughs> I know. Why do I do this? <laughs> to be fair, last time I didn't ignore you with the skirt. I didn't ignore you. It's just this time that I'm ignoring you. <sighs> because what I basically went and did, kind of like how I was drawing out skirt designs last week, I went and I drew out the jacket designs. I took kind of my inspiration images from Pinterest and was like, okay, so if I kind of combine things around to get, you know, short style jacket, different short style jacket, long style jacket, different longs, etc. I wound up with about like five different ones that I then just drew out on paper. And again, I kind of like, I would take a picture of it and then change style lines and then take a picture of it, change style lines. Except that I did that for the first two because I really liked both of them. One is this one right here which is kind of like a cropped jacket that tucks into a really, really wide and tall sort of cummerbund belt, like much taller than the belt that I made last week. This one's much more structured. And so that's option one, and it has the nice lapels that narrow out at the bottom. And actually, that was technically option two. Option one, I think I didn't even take a picture of because I realized it was just going to be too complicated. But it was based on these two fashion plates right here. And it basically has the lapels going from narrow to wide with additional lapels up at the top. And I just don't have any patterns like that. So I would really have to figure it out myself. And I don't like collars. Collars are confusing to me. And so... I realized like I just don't have the mental capacity to do that style right now as beautiful as it is love this style I don't have the mental capacity so that's why I really I didn't even take a picture of my drawing of that one and so then I went to number two and I liked number two and then I was like okay but what if we kind of did the look of the cropped jacket where it doesn't tuck in it looks like a jacket so I drew out number three right here and like this one too. I think it's also a good look. Again, with that wide, very tall belt, so we really get the defined waist in there. But then this one almost makes the bust larger because it is hanging out more. And I'm just not sure which one I like. So then I went and I drew out a variety of longer styles. And based on kind of like some of these fashion plates that I will just keep popping up here. And I was drawing out the longer styles and I would draw them out and just be like, ugh, no, that doesn't, I don't like it. And then I draw out another one. No, I don't like that one either. And I drew out a third one. No, I don't like that either. So all that said, I guess I'm not making a long jacket. I just don't like them. 
I don't think they're very pretty. They look stuffy, which like kind of in one of these scenes I want to look stuffy. Basically the two scenes that I'd be wearing these jackets for in Ragtime, one of them she literally says that's why I'm wearing this very unflattering dress. She wants to look businesslike. And so it obviously has to look businesslike and not like the floaty, floofy stuff that I've been wearing previously in the show. The other one is for, how much do I want to say to not spoil ragtime for you guys? Um, so someone dies and this is basically the funeral of that person. And so I just did not feel like I could wear white fluffy blouse, even if it was with a navy skirt. I didn't feel like that was appropriate. So I wanted something to tone down or cover up the white fluffy blouse, hence jacket. So originally I was going to wear the cropped jacket for that funeral scene and the longer jacket for the business-like scene. But I'm going to wear the same one for both scenes and we're going to do a crop jacket. And then when I looked at these two drawings next to each other, I realized that they're the same except that one is tucked into the belt. Like, that's basically it. I mean, I suppose that really the one that is not tucked into the belt maybe is a little bit wider because it does hang out from the sides, but they are basically the same jacket. Clearly, I like this style. So this is the style I'm going to make, and I am just going to decide after it's constructed, do I tuck it in? Do I not tuck it in? If I tuck it in, my guess is I would take an additional dart to make it slightly more fitted. If I don't tuck it in, no dart. <laughs> so that's what I'm going with. I'm going with that. And to get there, I'm going to use as my base Butterick 5232. I have used this once before, at least once before. I know I made this pattern for my mom. I made her an Eaton style Edwardian jacket, but I feel like based on the notes that I wrote on this pattern that I possibly also made something for my size, but I don't think I did. Like, I don't have anything that looks like this. So it must have been just for my mom that I made it, right? I can't figure out why else I would have it. So unless I used it for something that is very much not Edwardian, which that is the other possibility. Oh, I just figured it out. I think I used this for my vest for my Princess Anna frozen fever. Like not vest, the bol the bolero. So that outfit it has a fitted bodice, then it has this like bolero vesty thing that's all embroidered. I think I used this for that. So that's good because that means the marking on the pattern aren't there for me and therefore not quite corseted me, but basically because that bodice is tight. So, okay, great. Then that makes me a little bit less scared. Now I'm not following these style lines because this is very, very curvy up here at the bottom and I do want it to go longer and be able to get into the waist. I'm also thinking that I probably want to take this collar and narrow it down to the bottom there. So I think that's what I'm going to go for and just change those little. And I want a puffier sleeve, mostly because I am putting puffed sleeves into this jacket. Therefore, I kind of need a puffier sleeve. So those are the changes that I'm going to make, but now I feel a little bit better knowing that this was probably from Princess Anna. And I think making a mock-up should be pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the mock-up in twill, which would be my lining anyway. I'll do cotton twill, and if that works, then great. So this is the fabric that I'm using. It is dark navy blue, showing up very blue on the camera, but it's dark navy blue. It is sort of drapey, lightweight. I think it is a cotton blend of some sort with possibly wool and polyester or one or the other. I am not sure exactly what, but that's what's going on here. And uh, this, I should have enough to both easily make the jacket and also I want to make another skirt out of this. I already have an 1890 skirt out of this. It is the heaviest thing ever and I would like to make an Edwardian skirt that is much lighter weight because Edwardian skirts were lighter weight than 1890 skirts so that will be kind of part two assuming that I still have time after this jacket which now that I'm only making one jacket instead of two I should have no problem at all. So let's go ahead and get into our mock-up. So I have my mock-up assembled, but I also realized that like, 
I might as well make this skirt too, right? So um, I'm gonna go make the skirt. It's gonna be the same base pattern as the purple skirt from last week, period costume for Sage and Screen. And let's see just how quickly I can throw this skirt together. Well, it's a bit later at night than I had kind of hoped to finish, but the skirt is done. I know it doesn't really look like much. It's just navy blue. And in fact, I'm honestly wondering how different this will look actually like on than the 1890s skirt that I have that's made out of the same fabric. This is still extremely heavy and yet it is so much lighter than that skirt. Oh my gosh. So as I mentioned before, I used the same pattern as the lavender skirt that I made last week, except that I did do a little bit of tweaking where I basically made each of the panels about like half an inch larger on each side so that I could do some little pleats around. Because one of the things that I noticed with the other skirt is that it was very, very hip huggery. And I didn't want this to be quite so much. So I've got the gathers in the back like the last one, but then I also have just these little like tiny, not even half inch, like three quarter inch pleats around the sides. And then the front um, has a pleat on each side as well. And I think that this will be quite nice. I'm going to let this hang out overnight. I guess that I should say it's together. The waistband is on it. It's not done done because it still needs a hem so this gets to hang out overnight because this fabric is so shifty I had forgotten just how shifty this fabric is it's awful <laughs> so this is definitely going to stretch a whole lot on the bias I know that and so this is going to hang out until tomorrow evening most likely and at that point I will go ahead and hem as in pin everything mark pin everything for the hem and I will also put it on with the Eaton jacket to see how things look together and then Saturday today is Thursday night well now technically it's Friday morning but Saturday we have a rehearsal that will be primarily music and so that way I can work on the hem of this since it will be a hand hem since there's no ruffle I will work on the hem of this actually stitching it uh, on Saturday at rehearsal and then the skirt will be done but in the meantime I will be returning to the Eaton jacket tomorrow. Oh my gosh you guys so while making this skirt I kept thinking like was this a really stupid decision because the fabric is still pretty heavy I already have a skirt made out of this fabric it's only like you know 10 years difference etc was it a stupid decision and then I went and I pulled the other skirt out of the closet <laughs> Oh my god, you guys. I just weighed the two skirts. Like, I went on the scale, you know, without any skirt, then went with one skirt and went with the other skirt. The skirt that I'm currently wearing, the new one, it weighs three pounds exactly. You know, still kind of heavy. This weighs 6.2 pounds. And honestly, I'm surprised that it's not more because this is one that, like, it doesn't want to come off the closet rod. And, like, I think you can even tell like the heft at which I am lifting it right now. It feels so much more than like a five pound dumbbell, for example. It's so heavy because it's lined with twill and then it has a super deep hem facing of horsehair canvas and everything and it's just so heavy. I mean like this is how it has to stay on this hanger. This is a wooden hanger with like, you know, grandma crochet on it. And I have to have four polyester twill tapes that are sewn inside the inside of the skirt to hold this up. It is ridiculous. I can see my closet rod go down when I hang this up. Ugh. So I'm happy that I made this skirt basically is what I'm trying to say. So now let's go ahead and try on our mock-up and see how off it might be. I feel like it's gonna be really off, partially because, <laughs> look at this, I lengthened the front and I forgot to lengthen the side. So that is a big thing. Also, I'm almost positive I'm not wearing this corset cover. I think I talked about that in the last video, but I put it on anyway, just thinking I would try it one more time and it's just so rotund. I don't think I can do it. Like, not for stage, not when I'm gonna be feeling like I wanna look smaller. <laughs> And then I've got this going on right here. Yeah, um, well. <laughs> oh, it's stuck in the back. Okay. It's really big. I think that's the biggest thing. It is very large. So I figure out what all I need to 
do to make this smaller and make it fit. So I'm going to go look in the mirror for that and figure that out because I cannot tell in my tiny little monitor, but it is definitely too large. So I apologize for using black fabric for this mock-up slash hopeful lining, by the way, because I know you can't really see a lot. But the first thing that I've done is I have actually pulled up the shoulders because the arm size were like down here. So I've already gone and I've taken this up, I think like and I think an inch. This is how much I cut off from the shoulders. And in doing that, I then had to scoop out the back a little bit, the top. I still have to do more because I don't know if you can see, but it's bubbling up. It's like getting hung up on the collar. So I have to scoop this out some more so that it doesn't do that because um, it's basically it's just coming up way too high right now. It should be probably like here. So let me go ahead and mark that. Hopefully that mark works. And then the other thing that I'm still noticing, well, there's a lot of things I'm still noticing, but the next thing that I'm noticing, and I actually already have it pinned in the back, is that the side seam, which now I almost wonder if I pinned it too far back, but the side seam was like here at the bottom. Up here, it was right under the arm, but then it was tilting forward up here. And we don't want that. We want the side seam to be, you know, vertical. So I've pinned out this like pin in back. I'll probably decrease this pin just a little bit and I also will probably distribute it amongst the three seams that are in the back instead of just the center back but that will tell me how much I need to get rid of. I think it's like two or three inches to be honest. The back is also too long and then obviously the side doesn't meet and the front is too long and the front is still also probably too wide. However, it's really the back that is incredibly too wide. So yeah, I have like two and a half inches extra in the back, maybe two and a quarter. Oh, times two. So that's actually five. <laughs> so it's really too big. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out where all that needs to come out of in the back and also hopefully get rid of, oh wow, that neck was really too high. Look at the marking. It's this marking right here. That is where it needs to come down to. That seems suspicious. So I will probably lower that incrementally because I don't think it's going to be that low in back. I mean, like, it's an, kind of a nice round. It can definitely get more round right now. But yeah, we got some issues to work out. So I can't tell at this point if it is still too high in the neck. I mean, I think it might still be a little bit, but it is also really poofy here. So I think I just need to like change this seam a lot because I don't know, can you tell how poofy that is? Like it fits by the time we get to about here, I think, but this part is poofing out like a little fin. So I think that that is part of the issue there. Um, and then it's coming back in at the neck. So it's like just a little curve out. So I think I've pinned that and we'll get rid of some of that like humpback effect that's going on there. And the other thing now that the side seams are, they're either right or I pulled them a little too far. I only actually took two inches out of each side. So that might've been too much, but the side seams are hitting right where my thumbs are right now, so I think that's pretty darn close. They should probably be there, like a quarter inch off, but you know, I'm, I'm not being too picky. So now we can work on length. We obviously still also have a little bit too much width, um, so a lot of that is going to get like tapered out here. I do have to leave a bit for seam allowance because there will be a collar that goes on, but I want it to probably just meet is my kind of goal. So I will just stick a pin here where it is currently meeting and we'll go a half inch out from there. But yeah, this, this, uh, I mean, this I think is actually probably pretty correct. The side, not the front. So we'll just taper the front in because this should be cropped. I'm using the purple belt right now as kind of a stand in, but it will most likely have like a wide, like up here type belt, whether I tuck it in or not, we'll have that wider belt. And then the back, every time I put it on, it's kind of funny because the back gets like hung up at first and I keep thinking like, oh, okay, it's right now. And then I realize, no, it's actually still hung up. So the back needs to come up a little bit as well because it is just a little too cropped, but I think we're close. I really should have taken off the corset cover. <laughs> Probably should still just go ahead and do that, but I'm kind of compressing the poof here 
and I mean these are meant to go with poofy things I just it's too much it's too much for stage so yeah I'm gonna level off the back and figure out what's going on in the center back seam and then I think we're probably gonna be pretty okay everything has now been taken in and cropped and everything like that I do still need to bring the neck just a little bit lower in the back even with taking that fin out but the fin gives like removing it gives much better fit and I had taken off some of the fronts here because I was going to make it meet but I feel like this looks very vesty and not really what I'm going for I think I'm liking it a lot better like this whether I wear it outside or inside so I don't think I'm going to do the turn back lapel like this which means that this is going to be excess and I'm just going to have like a collar down because the turn back lapel is too much brain work for me as I said collars are hard and I don't want to so <laughs> I am going to crop a little bit further off because <sighs> just on me like I'm going to have to do some sort of facing or something because otherwise that seam will show. Well, even still, I don't think I want to mess with like turned back lapels. I think it's just going to be easier to do an added collar. Now all the gears, they're turning. I'll decide what I'm doing. <laughs> I think it's going to be easier to do an added collar, but I'm going to go work out some math brain stuff. But once I figure that out, I will cut off the excess because there is excess. Whether I do like a turned back lapel, if I do a turned back lapel, then I'm pretty sure I have to recut things. And I don't want to recut things. That was kind of the point of like doing all this alteration. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a collar, but I'm going to think about that some more and decide and cut off any excess that there might be from right here. But everything else I think is looking really good. Getting like that waist definition here, which I like. Obviously it'll be a half inch shorter as well because it will be finished on the bottom. And that's really good. I'll cut the neck down just a little bit lower and that'll be excellent. I think shoulder width is spot on. So I will need to figure out sleeves. But once I figure out the lapel question here, then I can take this apart, cut off all the excess that are in all of the seams right now, and compare it to if I really like kind of just got back to the original pattern and you know, no sizing up necessary because part of me is thinking that that's where we're at. So I'm definitely gonna do a compare and contrast with the original pattern and these new pieces. But yeah, first let's figure out some lapel stuff. So. Lapel wise, I think what I've actually kind of accidentally figured out is how to get like this look right here where you have that wide lapel at the bottom but nothing at the top and it is that you cut this section here too wide and in this case also it cuts out and then down and so you do that and then it just folds back. So I think I'm going to recut one front with like the extra extra and like having it cut out a little bit higher here and then wider and dip down more I think I'm going to try cutting one of these and replace it like on so that the rest of it stays the same and if that doesn't work then that kind of lapel wasn't meant to be obviously and I will go with something much more simple but I think that is what that is. And then it has like the collar portion right here added on. So I mean, that seems pretty simple. So yeah, I'm gonna test it out. So I think that I kind of figured out the lapel, but I also just made it way too oversized. So right now it's going all the way out to there, all the way like down to here. And it's not disconnecting in the right place because I actually didn't quite have it on where like the fold should be. I had a little too far over underneath. So I think that the jacket is probably okay underneath, but then I've drawn in new white lines. I don't know if you can see these at all, but there's white lines that are marking out where the edges should be. So there should just be seam allowance added to that. And then that would be it. So I'm gonna cut off that excess and then I'll go ahead and cut another front just like it and that should be good. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and from the new cut line over here, just 
cut the navy fabric and also it'll have to have facings that match this shape but like aren't the entire side of the bodice and the facings I haven't quite decided if I want to go slightly lighter navy or if I want to go a black like a cotton sateen was what I was thinking so I'm gonna play around with that with the facings maybe try one of each and see what looks best but yeah I'm ready to cut everything but I will show you how different this is from the pattern oh also before I show you that I just want to let you know that I did also while I was working on all of this bodice I did also mark and pin up my hem so that is ready to get hand sewn tomorrow at rehearsal so yeah our new patterns are very different <laughs> than the old patterns I mean this one in particular has the weird lapel which this is the fold line right here if you see this line that's the fold line and then we've got seam allowance and that's the lapel so that is different for a good reason but it is also different here this one is pretty different also and the back here is very very different so yeah I mean it was a good base but here's our new pattern so my bodice pieces are now all cut out and flatlined and sewn together and now I have to do the hard part of figuring out lapels and collars and stuff. So this is the lapel facing. I decided to do it out of black sateen. It's a cotton sateen but it's it's not showing up as shiny on the screen as it actually is. It's pretty shiny but I'm trying to remember the order of operations. So I have not yet figured out the collar portion like the lapel collar that will be up at the neckline. This this is just the front lapel that hangs down over the belt and I'm kind of thinking that I think maybe I have to do the other one first but I can't remember so I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this for now and if I have to take a little bit of it off it would only be like the top section anyway so I will do that but maybe yeah now you can see it's shiny just wasn't catching the light before but so that's what I'm doing here so this basically the shiny side if I'm doing this right the shiny side of this the the correct side that goes right sides together with the outside of the bodice fabric jacket fabric and then this is going to get seamed all up here and then turned so that the shiny side will actually be kind of facing with the inside the twill over here then of course the lapel will open up and so we'll see the shiny side there hopefully that makes sense hopefully that's all correct and I, again I have a feeling that I might need to take off some of this part to do the collar but since I haven't even patterned that yet it's not happening right now so I realized that I'm pretty sure the collar will actually have to go on before the facing. So I have the facing pinned right now, not sewn, and it's of course pinned wrong side so it's kind of hard to figure out, but I did a collar mock-up. I took one that actually was with this pattern and then I tweaked it, like made little darts to make it fit this neckline, because remember I took a lot out of this neckline, and then I changed the lines over here and I folded in the seam allowances, there's these weird corners because I did that but to try to get like the actual scale of this collar and I mean I think I like the shoulder but I'm realizing that I think this might actually need to be a two-piece collar because I want this to look layered I want like layer 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 but I don't know how to do that with the other because then I would think that this would have to fold back first because this layer is supposed to be underneath these layers not over based on the fashion plate that is my inspiration but I don't know how to face that because then what I need a facing I mean I need a facing for up here anyway but like the facing would go on last I don't know because like if I do this and this is the facing so this area doesn't need the facing just this would need the facing but then there's nah, I don't get it this is why colors are confusing why am I trying to do this really complicated thing but also it looks neat and so like this won't be as wide underneath here I'm thinking I really should just sew this on because then I can play with this and see you know if I have it maybe the right order or what how the facing would work so yeah I think I'm gonna go ahead sew this seam on and then figure out how that works in. So I have the lapel on I don't know how well you can see the black versus the navy but the lapel is on and then I've got the collar mock-up up here I actually took 
down the seam allowance because this piece right here was way too small and I widened it out down over here as well. Um, but I'm just not liking it. And I don't know if it's the fact that like she is super short waisted. So right now the bottom of the jacket is just like there's no waist definition on here at all. So it's just kind of hard to tell the scale which would be like way up here. But I don't know. It just seems boring. And of course it's going to be black. So like it'd be even more boring. So now I'm like do I do anything at all? And I'm also like, no, I'm not liking the shape. And maybe it's just because it's on her and it looks frumpy. I mean, it's kind of supposed to look somewhat frumpy because there's a line in the show that says very unflattering dress. So like it's supposed to be very unflattering. But I also wanted to be flattering. So Ooh, I don't know. And then I still don't know how to make this. Like the double, I mean, how to make that or how to insert it because none of this is showing up. But OK, so this right now is a finished edge right here and then the inside is there. So this is just like rolling over, but then it seems like that rolled over bit should be underneath that. So I just don't know how that works. I guess if this was a wholly separate piece, it would go in and then there'd be a facing anyway. I don't know, this is hard, but like it is sticking over the edge where the seam allowance winds up going off. So maybe it does get incorporated into this seam. I hope you can see any of this because I feel like the black on white contrast is just making it so you can see no detail on the black. This is all very hard and I probably shouldn't be figuring this out at one in the morning. So maybe I'll just like think on it and then I'll try it on tomorrow and see how I feel when it's not on this form making it look all short and frumpy. So I figured it would be good while I'm at it to go ahead and test out a sleeve for this. So I've actually gone and taken this jacket pattern, which is kind of costumey Edwardian, but has some good elements. And I'm looking at both the sleeve for this one and for this one to see which I like better. So I have them laid on top of each other here. And I've looked at kind of what, you know, I think I want, what the sleeve underneath that is already on the blouse is going to be, etc. And I've determined that this wider width from the bottom one is definitely what I want. Uh, however, the bottom one has this little ruffly thing. So I folded that up and out of the way, but I do like the length of the bottom one as well. However, I like the sort of dippy finish of this one. So what I'm going to do, because this will go into a sleeve, mine is going to go into a cuff, but see this goes into like a lower sleeve, whereas mine, since I have it right here on my phone, goes into this sort of cuff. So what I'm going to do here here is that I'm going to basically use the bottom sleeve but then also make the bottom edge dippy out like this one. So I am going to do this with the navy and I'm going to flatline it with cotton organdy and we'll see how that goes. All right, so here is the jacket on with the sleeves. I'm really liking the look of the sleeves. I was actually worried before I put it on that they were going to be too small, like not puffed enough. But yeah, I think those look excellent. They'll go into a little cuff or something down here. Though I have to admit, I kind of actually like the look of the white cuff. So I don't know, I was going to do black cuffs, but we'll see how that goes. And then we have the lapel here, which to be honest, I'm kind of liking the look of no collar up here. I haven't tried putting on that little collar mock-up. I do also worry that this jacket is long. I have not hemmed it yet, so like there's a half inch that will go away, but I'm actually kind of worried that it is more than a half inch too long because like I feel like I should see more of the blouse because there's going to be this big wide belt here that I do not have on yet. And instead they are meeting edge to edge. Um, again, without counting that seam allowance, there's a tiny gap, but yeah, I am liking the look of this long lapel much better on me than on the form where it like completely overlaps the skirt because she's so short waisted. So at least there's that, but I don't know about the collar. Let me try on that other collar mock-up see what that will look like. I think it's unnecessary. I think it's going to look way better just plain 
than have what looks currently like bird poop on my shoulder. I mean, obviously it would be black to match the lapels, but I just feel like even the shape is unnecessary and that looks pretty good right there. Yeah, and then I could also, this is maybe a little too large because I can still actually bring this together to meet while well, I suppose I'm not folded over all the way. So if it's folded exactly where it should be, there and here at the bottom, then it doesn't quite meet, it almost does. And I don't mind that, I think that's probably pretty good and might give me the option of doing a full tuck in with the belt versus tuck in except for the lapels, because that's my kind of my plan. So that's good, because that'll make it more versatile. But yeah, I think that all I need to do is like bind the neckline then and not worry about any additional lapel and all of that crazy so that's pretty good now unfortunately it is sunday night right now and i should be going to edit this video right now <laughs> which means that i'm not actually going to get this finished in this video most of next video is going to be making a corset style belt because this belt's not going to be like last week's belt where it was just ruched. This is going to be one with like actual structure and I don't even know if I'm going to ruch it at all, like even have a ruched top. It might just be flat actual structure made out of the black cotton sateen to match this. And then obviously I will be also finishing the jacket. So it's almost done, but it's going to be binding on the neckline and on the waist, figuring out if this needs to come up a little higher, especially, and also doing the cuffs. So just a little bit on the jacket and everything else will be on that cool like corset belt type thing because it will, my plan is for the corset belt to have actual boning in it. So it will like be its own sort of structure. Obviously it's worn over a corset, but it will be its own structure that kind of just encases everything with the jacket. So that is what we are going to do next week to finish up this outfit, but not too bad. I mean, we've got most of the jacket plus an entire skirt done. I don't think I even told you, but at rehearsal yesterday, I did fully do the hem on this. I did the hooks and eyes at the waist. I will be wearing this skirt both over this corset and over my 19 teens corset. So I will need to put on another set of the bars on here because that has a larger, it makes my waist larger. So I will need to put that on once I try that corset on. But otherwise, I mean, yeah, not too shabby. We got most of a suit done and we'll be finishing it up next week. So if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Julie, and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!